Hi boys and girls, this is the Mouse and the Motorcycle, Chapter 4, ad, or 5, Adventure in the Night. When we left off, Ralph and the boy Keith met each other. They realized they could understand what one another was saying, and Keith taught Ralph how to ride a motorcycle. Let's get started. When Ralph had mastered riding the motorcycle on the threadbare carpet, he went bumping over the roses on the less worn parts under the dresser and the bedside table. That was fun, too. Hey, whispered the boy, come on out where I can see you. Ralph shout, shot out into the moonlight where he stopped, sitting jauntily on the motorcycle with one foot resting on the floor. Say, he said, how about letting me take her out in the hall? You know, just for a little spin to see how fast she'll go. Promise you'll bring it back? asked Keith. Scout's honor, answered Ralph, who had picked up expressions from children who stayed in 215. Okay, I'll tell you what, said Keith. You can use it at night, and I'll use it in the daytime. I'll leave the door open an inch so you can get in. That way you can ride it up and down the hall at night. Can I really? This was more than Ralph had hoped for. Where do you want me to park it when I come in? He asked. Someplace where the maid won't step on it, answered the boy. That's easy, under the bed. She practically never cleans under the bed. Yeah, I know, agreed Keith. I looked, there's a lot of dust and mice back there. Please, Ralph had, was pained. Oh, sorry said the boy. That's what my mother calls bunches of dusty fluff under the bed. My mother doesn't, said Ralph. Now, how about opening the door? The boy had put his hand on the doorknob. You won't let anything happen to my motorcycle, will you? He asked. You know I won't let anything happen to a beauty like this, said Ralph. See that you don't, and don't stay out too late. The boy opened the door and permitted Ralph to put it out into the dim light of the hall. Ralph had a scary feeling that he was on the threshold of an adventure. There were no beds or chairs for him to dart under in case of danger. The floor creaked. Someone was snoring in room 214 across the hall. Outside in the pines, an old owl hooted, sending prickles up Ralph's spine. Ralph controlled the trembling of his paws while he hesitated outside the door to consider the possibilities of the hall, which was carpeted down the center, leaving two smooth highways of bare floor on either side along the baseboards. It did not take Ralph long to decide what to do. He picked up his tail, took a deep breath, bent low over the handlebars, flattened his ears, and sped down the straightaway as fast as the motorcycle would go. He could feel his whiskers swept back by the force of his speed. It was glorious. Ralph had never ventured so far from home before. The old wooden hotel cooling in the night air snapped and creaked, but Ralph was brave. He was riding a motorcycle. He passed room 213, ran out of breath, let momentum carry him past another noisy snorer in 211, on down the hall to the elevator. The mysterious elevator that carried people to that wonderful place Ralph had heard so much about. The ground floor. When Ralph came to the stairs, he stopped to look down, knowing it was impossible to ride a motorcycle downstairs, and at the same time wishing he could see for himself the wonders that lay below, he sniffed the air and it seemed to him that he could smell the strange foods that he had heard about. Cinnamon buns with sticky frosting, turkey stuffing, and pancakes with maple syrup. A ray of moonlight from the window glinted on the glassy eye of a mounted deer head over the stair landing and startled Ralph, sending him off down the hall, past the room closet, and into the linen room at the end of the hall, where he executed a sharp turn and started back. Exhilarated by speed, Ralph raced up and down. Once he had heard some people getting out of the elevator, he had to duck behind the curtain of the window at the end of the hall. Toward midnight, he passed his Aunt Sissy scurrying along the baseboard. He waved and nearly lost control of the motorcycle. Aunt Sissy stopped and stared while Ralph rode on, feeling pleased with himself and at the same time, sorry for Aunt Sissy. Poor frightened little thing with only her feet to carry her from one crumb to the next. 
up and down the hall where raced Ralph until after an especially noisy burst of speed outside room 211, he was startled to hear a dog inside the room. Now it was Ralph's turn to be frightened. Oh, oh, he thought, I better be careful. If there was one thing Ralph disliked, it was people who traveled with dogs. Dogs always sniffed around where they had no business sniffing. Once a dog had even barked into the mouse hole in room 215. It was days before Ralph's mother got over that. Ralph heard someone moving around inside room 211 and looking back over his shoulder, he saw the door open and a tousled man in a bathrobe and slippers appeared carrying a little terrier. The man looked cross and sleepy as he started down the hall toward the elevator with his dog. He was walking straight toward Ralph, realizing he was taking a chance. Ralph speeded up the motorcycle. If he turned and headed back to room 215, he would have to pass the man. It was better to continue toward the elevator and hope he could find a place to hide. He raced down the hall. The wild barks of the little terrier told Ralph that he had been seen by the dog, if not the man. Shut up! muttered the man to his dog. I'm gonna walk you. You don't have to wake the whole hotel. Ralph reached the elevator where he dove around behind the ashtray on a stand beside the door. He stopped and waited, tense and frightened. Outside, an owl hooted, was silent, and hooted again. A sudden breeze rattled windows and banged a door. Ralph's teeth began to chatter. The dog whimpered, but the man walked straight past Ralph pushed a button, and in a moment stepped into the elevator. Woo, thought Ralph when the elevator door had closed on the sleepy man and his noisy dog. Maybe he better lay down for a while. In a few minutes, the elevator returned to the second floor. As the man stepped out, the little dog looked over his shoulder and spied Ralph parked behind the ashtray stand. Because the dog was a captive and he was free, Ralph could not resist sticking out his tongue and wagging his paws in his ears, a gesture he had learned from children in room 215, and one he knew was sure to arouse anger. Let me at him, barked the little terrier. Cut it out grumbled the man, fumbling for the doorknob of room 211, while Ralph, a daredevil now, rode in giddy circles around the ashtray stand. He had a feeling of cockiness he had never known before. Who said mice were timid? Ha! When the morning song of birds in the pines grew louder and the snores of the guests and dawn slipped through the window at the end of the hall, Ralph knew it was time to return to room 215. There, he was shocked to discover the door shut. Only then did he recall the draft in the night and the slam of the door. He got off the motorcycle and pounded on the door with his fist. But that sleeping boy could hear a mouse beating on the door, could he? Ralph knew from experience that he could flatten himself out and crawl under the door of the room 215. But there was no way he could get the motorcycle through the crack. Not even by laying on its side and pushing. The handlebars were too wide. Ralph dismounted from the motorcycle, sat down, and leaned against the baseboard, prepared to guard the motorcycle until Keith awoke and discovered the door blown shut. He was tired after a night of such great excitement and full of dreams. Now he had seen the hall, he could no longer be satisfied with 215. It was not enough. He longed to see the rest of the world, the dining room and the kitchen, the storeroom and the garbage cans. He wanted to see the game room where he had been told grown-up people played games with cards and balls and paddles. He wanted to go outdoors and brave the owls and hunt for seeds. Ralph, a growing mouse who needed his rest, dozed off against the baseboard beside the motorcycle. After the experiences of this night, he would never be the same again. The next thing Ralph knew, Matt the bellboy was standing over him. Aren't you out pretty late, Matt asked, causing Ralph to jump to his feet, even though he was not entirely awake. You should have been in bed long ago, but I suppose you were out till all hours speeding around on that motorcycle. Ralph had seen Matt many times, but this was the first time the old man had spoken to him. He was astonished to discover they spoke the same language. Even so, Ralph stood in front of the motorcycle. Anyone who tried to take it away from him would have to fight Ralph first. Nice little machine you got there, remarked Matt. Kind of wish I was young enough to ride one myself. Must be fun speeding along, making all that noise. All right, boys and girls, we will finish this chapter, which is almost over, and start the next one next time. Should be Friday. All right, you guys have an awesome day. I'll see you later.